Talking Football on WTNS with Steve Corries and Casey Claxon. Welcome to Talking Football from WTNS. I'm Casey Claxon. Talking Football is brought to you again this year by Coshocton Regional Medical Center, your local health care team supporting local athletics. Coshocton Regional Medical Center, where care matters most. We welcome you into our football preview show on Talking Football as Steve Corey's will be out and about talking with all three area high school football coaches, Steve Smith from Coshocton, John Slusser of the Ridgewood Generals, and Tom Lasecki from the Riverview Black Bears. We'll have the Ridgewood and Coshocton game coming up on Friday night on WTNS. Coos and Chris Wallace will have the play-by-play -play on FM 99.3 WTNS. And once again this year, we will be live streaming all 12 of the WTNS broadcast on the WTNS website and YouTube channel. So make sure you bookmark those pages to see all the games on video or just listen to them on FM 99.3 WTNS. On Wednesday, Steve Corey's had a chance to catch up with all three area football coaches. He started his trip at Stewart Field with head coach Steve Smith. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Corey's along with Steve Smith, the head coach of the Coshocton Redskins. Redskins opening up the season here in a week, uh, two weeks. And, Coach, uh, appreciate you being on with us. Thank you, Coos. Always good to be here. Okay, the first thing I want to talk a little bit about, I always like to kind of reminisce and go back a little bit. Last year, 3-7 uh, and seven season, but really the record wasn't indicative of how you played. You had three three one-point games, another one was down to the wire, and you, things could have turned either way. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could look at our season and you can say we were five plays away from hosting a playoff game, but it, it didn't work out that way, and, and we finished how we finished. But, you know, it says, it says a lot about our kids, and, you know, we, it could have went a lot different towards the end, but they, they came, they stayed together, and we finished strong. Uh, but, you know, when you go through something like that, those are, those are teachable moments. And, you know, you get in situations in tight games, you got to make a play to, to seal it. So, um, you know, those that stuff that we've been working on, the mental stuff that we've been working on all summer, and, you know, hopefully what we've been working on shows up uh, as we progress through the season. All right, let's talk a little bit about what you have coming back. You lost basically your entire backfield, but you have your quarterback back. He's a three-year guy for sure. I may have even played a lot as a freshman. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and that's a good building block. Yeah, you know, everybody knows that Colton's a great athlete. Um, but, you know, this is his third year uh, in the offense. And, he, and he's, you know, your first year starting, you're just worried about yourself, whether you're doing what you're supposed to. Your, your second year starting, you're starting to figure out yourself, and then you're, you're figuring out everybody else. This year he knows where everybody's got to be. All and right. His leadership ability has been outstanding all summer. So let's talk a little bit about what you're going to do to fill those backfield spots and uh, and offensively, if things will change, you're going to continue to try to run the wing tee and do what you do. You know, um, we had a lot of success with our younger kids, and you know they've had to, they've had to wait with uh, with our three running backs that have been there for a couple years, uh, so they're ready to step in. We have uh, basically a, a five back rotation that we're doing right now, and obviously uh, we got a couple of different things that we can do by, with Colton that uh, we didn't really do last year um, that we're going to we'll look at doing this year. Um, but, you know, we have some sophomores that are stepping into some starting roles uh, with, with Logan and Champ. And then, obviously, Isaiah Bronson is going to be a, a first-year starter. And then rotating in, we got J.T. Newell and, and uh, Colin Phillips. All right, let's talk about the other side of the ball on the defensive side. Lost some people there. What, what can we expect? Uh, you know, what we do have this year is we have good depth up front. So, um, you know, we've got another year stronger. Um, we have a lot of three-year starters coming back. So most of our offense and defensive line is back from the last from last year. So that that's always good. That's always, you know the trenches are everything. If you if you don't take care of of the line of scrimmage, nothing behind it really matters. So, oh. um, but yeah, we have a lot of guys stepping into new roles. Um, again, the same players. Colton's come back as a DB. Um, we got two new line, inside linebackers this year uh, with Hayden Young and JT. Um, we got Cohen and Logan that are stepping in as safeties this year. And then uh, Bladen Workman and Jackson Smith are still ironing things out for that other corner spot. Okay, now let's talk about the schedule. I, I know you have a new uh, team on in Highland Sparta. It'll be in here on, I believe, week three. But still, a uh, pretty daunting schedule. Always tough playing in the MVL. Yeah, uh, you know, here at Coshocton, we've always played a tough schedule. Um, you know, the thing is, is, is you got to capitalize uh, when the other team makes mistakes, and you got to keep your mistakes to a minimum. So, 
again, you know, we, we, had, we had early in the year, we had some mistakes, uh, you know, with penalties and turnovers that really cost us big time. Um, we, you know, focusing on keeping those down uh, early. Um, and then, you know, you just got to play. You got to be mentally tough for four quarters. Every week's, every it's one week at a time. Every week's a playoff game mentality right now. All right. Hey, Lee, listen, I appreciate your time. Look forward to talking to you next week when we start the uh, pregame stuff. And uh, good luck this season. Thank you, Coos. Talking Football is brought to you each and every week by Coshocton Regional Medical Center, your local health care team supporting local athletics. Coshocton Regional Medical Center where care matters most. Coming up next, we'll send it out to Ridgewood as Coos talks with Ridgewood's very own Johnny Football, John Slesser. That interview and more coming up after this message from Coshocton Regional Medical Center. Okay, head to the doctor. I'll see you later. I find it really rewarding to work here because I know that the care I provide will directly impact this community. I was born in this hospital and it gives me a great sense of pride to be able to give back that health care that I got while I was a patient here. When the people come in, we know them by name and that means so much to a patient when we can connect with them and I know that they know they're loved. You can have exceptional care right here in your own backyard. My guest this afternoon is John Slesser, the head coach of the Ridgewood Generals. John comes in in his 20th year as a head coach of Ridgewood. And, Coach, thanks for being with us. Oh, more than welcome. All right, let's talk a little bit about this coming season. Coming off a season a year ago, eight and four, um, second round of the playoffs, which has become a quite a, you know, really something you guys are used to doing. And uh, I always wonder about when you, you get to these playoff games as much as you have, does that add pressure to you as you start the season? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, it's always our goal to make the playoffs. I don't, I don't think it's any extra pressure. Um, I think my staff and I and even the kids now, we always put pressure on ourselves to be the best we can be. And, and there's been such a long run. I, I mean, a lot of our kids, like you said, I've been here 20 years. Um, we ask our kids this all the time. Since they've been in school, they've only known Ridgewood football to be pretty good. So, I don't think they want to be the one to end the, the run or anything like that. But we've had years where we've not made the playoffs. So it's not like it's been a every year passing. I think we've had three different times in those 20 years where we haven't made the playoffs. So it happens. And if it happens this year, we'll be fine. And we'll still go on the next year. All right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, this season and your, and, your, and your team. You've got a veteran quarterback coming back. You have some veteran on the offensive line. Uh, just I know we're only in week two of the, of the preseason, but early on, what, how have you seen? What is the expectations? Um, I, I've been real pleased so far. Uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of our kids grow up. Um, my junior class is, is pretty athletic. They always have been. Um, and I told the parents last year, like, I just couldn't stand to be around most of them because they were really immature. <laughs> um, it's turned out, and a year later, um, it's, it's become one of my favorite groups. Uh, they really work hard. They're, they're awesome kids. Um, it's really, it's been a great year. It's been one of my funner, funner, I don't know if that's the right word, one of my better times um, coaching here because the kids have been so enjoyable. Our, our senior class um, has been a group that hasn't always been Real successful all the way up through, but they've come on and become have some really high end players, um, and they've just worked really hard. It's been a it's been a fun group to be around, and I've enjoyed this so far. All right, let's talk a little bit about the offensive side of the football. You have Lommers back at quarterback, have some other skilled people back as well. Um, give us an idea of uh, how you think that's coming along. Um, uh, you're right. We we like our quarterback. Grant did a really good job for us last year. Um, I think we've surrounded him with really good skilled people. Uh, you know, we've got three or four running backs we like. Um, like most years, um, a lot of it's going to come down to how we get it done up front. Um, we return, I think, five of the six guys we played up there last year. So, you know, you would think if, if we're doing anything as coaches, we've gotten better from one year to the next. If we haven't, that's probably on us and, and the culture we have. Um, if we can't improve on that, then it's probably time to take a look at our culture because if you get kids for two years, they ought to get better the second year. Um, I, I, I think we have a chance to be pretty good offensively. It'll just be how fast those guys up front click. 
All right, defensive side of the football. Uh, I know you have some veterans back there as well. Um, defensively, we return, I think, eight or nine of the 11 starters. Um, I, I'd like to think we'd be better back there. Um, I, I like our speed on defense. Um, you know, we've got a, a, some nice guys back up front. I think Grant's pretty good. I, I think Sess has been one of the best linemen in the area the past two years. Um, the Nettles kid has really come on. We got Logan back. Um, I, I hate when I name names because ultimately I miss some. Um, we've moved Preston up front, and he's been, he's been doing a great job. I really like our linebacking core. Um, Sparg's been there for three years. Um, the Tolliver kid's only a sophomore, but I think he's going to be pretty good. And we returned three of the four DBs back from last year. So, yeah, like on paper, we should be all right. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you still got to play the games. You got to line up, and, and you're probably going to get to it. But our schedule is pretty brutal. Um, I, I think we have a chance to be okay. I really do. All right, let's talk a little bit about the schedule and the fact that you've moved from Division Five to Division Six. I know you have Utica, which is new on your schedule this year, but you still have the gauntlet and the IVC that you have to run through. Um, I, I tell everybody this that wants to hear it, which nobody does. Um, when I when I started off here 20 years ago, our, our schedule consisted of two teams bigger than us. Um, in the IVC, we're always first or second biggest school in the league. We played Riverview and Coshocton as the only two schools bigger than us. Um, fast forward 20 years to where we are now, um, we play two schools smaller than us on our schedule. We play Strasburg week five, and we play Garraway week 10, and we're like three boys difference. Um, so, I mean, take your pick there. Um, now we play every school's a division or two bigger than us. We play in a league where we're the – us and Garraway are the two smallest schools. Um, the schedule's really changed. Unfortunately for me and for our kids, I don't think the expectations have changed at all. We still expect to go compete and try to win a lot of those. Um, but, the, but the competition we play has changed so much. Even from like when my son was a senior in 2016, the schedule they played is no comparison to the schedule we play now. Um, so I, I hear like our old... Our old players come back a lot. You know, we always you've been around here. We have a lot of players in and out of here all the time from the past. And they're like, well, we were 9-1 and with this. I'm like, if you played the schedule these guys play now, you would not be 9-1. and It's different. It's a different animal. Um, but uh, our kids seem to step up to it, and I'm hoping we will again. All right. Hey, listen, I appreciate your time here. We'll be talking with you next week when we get ready to start the, the regular part of the season against Coshocton. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, Coos. I appreciate it. Don't forget, we will have that game on FM 99.3 WTNS as Ridgewood takes on Coshocton. That game will be at Stewart Field. Our pregame show starting at 6.30, kickoff and play-by-play -play on Friday night at 7 o'clock from FM 99.3 WTNS. The Riverview Black Bears will be on the road the first two weeks of their season, and they start by making the climb on the hill to Sugar Creek. Steve Corey's had a chance to talk with the head coach of the Riverview Black Bears, Tom Lasecki. With me is Tom Lasecki, the head coach of the Riverview Bears. And first of all, I want to say thanks for being with us here today. Well, I appreciate it. I'm glad uh, being here. And I'm glad you're here with us, and we're looking forward to the season. All right, let's talk a little bit about what the expectations. You know, a year ago did not go, I know, the way you wanted to. And I know numbers have been a little bit of an issue for you. So how does things look as you prepare for this season? Well, again, numbers are an issue. Um, we're in the mid-30s again this year. Uh, it, the off season, uh, getting kids to join and be part of the program didn't go as planned. Um, we were expecting bigger numbers, much bigger numbers, and, and it just didn't pan out. So that's been a little disappointing. But I love the kids that we have. They work extremely hard. Um, they're going to be talented. It just is going to take time and patience again. But our expectations are we want to play better every day and uh, somewhere along the line, Get that one win. All right, let's talk a little bit about the se about your team. Uh, offensively, I know historically you've liked to run the wing tee. Anything change? What do you want to try to do this year with a bunch of younger kids? Well, we are still wing tee, but it's going to be a little more gun wing tee. Um, so uh, Gavin Huff will be our quarterback, and uh, he's an athletic little kid. And so we're going to try to use him as, as part-time as a runner, as a thrower, and uh, control it back to the quarterback. Kidron Snow will be our main uh, running back this year, uh, we switched him from guard to running back late last year, 
and uh, it panned out well for him. So uh, we're looking forward a lot to him and, you know, trying to get the ball to Brody Bucks in, in the slot a little bit. So uh, those are our main key guys that we're trying to use. All right, let's talk about the other side of the ball defensively um, with a young team that's going to be probably a learning on the on the fly. It is, and the biggest area that we are behind in is a defensive backfield, um, which we lost all four of the guys that we thought we were going to have back this year. Not one of them is back. So we have four new kids back there playing defensive back. Um, so that's going to be our challenge there. But, again, Brody and Kidron – Landon Frame, uh, those are our main guys uh, on the defensive side of the ball. All right, let's talk about the, the schedule. Um, I know you've added Garraway for week one. Um, you've got to go through the gauntlet of the MVL, which is, believe me, is no easy task looking at what you have to go through. So kind of run down the schedule as you see it. Well, as again, we, as we start off next week with Garraway uh, in the opener at Garraway, and uh, nothing like taking on the regional finalist team in the first game of the season. Uh, with a group of young kids. Um, but again, if we do our job, which is control the football, we try to make it competitive, see what we can do with them. Follow that with Ridgewood. So another, the top two teams, two of the top three teams in the IBC, we get right off the bat. Uh, and then we finish up our non-conference play with Tuslaw. And so uh, they come to our place for our home opener. And then, like you said, we get into the MBL. And uh, that's a bear. All right. Anything else uh, you'd like to add as you get ready to get things going here? I know the scrimmage you had a, had a scrimmage earlier. How did did that go? Okay. We scrimmaged uh, Claymont and Maysville. It was a three-way scrimmage. Uh, I thought our kids did really well. Uh, we moved the ball um, defensively. We struggled at times, but again, we also made plays at times. So uh, it's one of those things. It's just patience has got to be sitting on our side again. Uh, but if you really look at our young kids, the, the sophomores and the freshmen, uh, the future is bright. And our bidding program and our youth, uh, junior high program is coming along. So it's a lot of work and a lot of pro slow process here. All right, listen, hey, I appreciate your time here this afternoon. And uh, as always, good luck on the season. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for everyone. So good luck to the Bears on Friday night against the Garraway Pirates. And, of course, we will have the Ridgewood and Riverview game in week two. That will be on Friday night, August the 30th. We'll have that game as well on FM 99.3 WTNS and live streaming on the WTNS website and YouTube channel. I'm Casey Claxton. This is Talking Football, brought to you by Coshocton Regional Medical Center, your local health care team supporting local athletics. Coshocton Regional Medical Center, where care matters most. Talking Football is a production of WTNS Sports and Claxton Communications.